flags that men cheat and women don't. Men don't look for the red flags. With women, you come home late a few times and she's already suspicious. You don't reply to her text, she's already suspicious because we've been conditioned to think that's a, a red flag. Men aren't uh, trained to think women cheat. They think women are loyal, loving, and, you know, if anything, they're the one that's going to cheat. So they're not trained to look for the red flag. And what I say with women who are genuinely most likely to cheat, usually it comes from her background. If she grew up without a stable, loving father figure, what happens is one partner is... Children are designed to be loved by two people. It's just how they're designed. You know, you've got children. They need you. They need their mom. They need two people. And you know from your own experience that you need a dad as well. Now, what happens when you are in a relationship is that person kind of becomes your everything. And when they sense a fear of abandonment, any abandonment that their partner might be some, spending too much time at work, might be taking long to reply, whatever it is, that woman who grew up with that fear of abandonment now thinks, shit, I'm going to be by myself, ends up going to somebody, having a backup plan. Whereas a woman with a healthy home, what happens when that happens, she doesn't like it, she'll communicate it more often. And if she has to leave, she'll leave. But the woman with the fear of abandonment and fear of being alone doesn't want to be by herself again. So she needs to have that love from two people. She'll get it from somebody else. And that usually is what I find. When I, when a man asks me, tells me about his wife cheating, it's the first question I ask. It's a sad reality, though. It's a shame. Because I, I don't want to in any way judge it. But when you've had no father figure at all, it puts a lot of pressure. Women need to be loved. They need men. And so when they find a husband... He becomes the only man in her life. And when he's abandoning her, she thinks, shit, what do I do? Whereas when you have your father figure, it's like my, my boyfriend's being annoying and your dad will say, oh, you know, don't worry about it. You know, you've got that, you know, when you're comforting your kids, they come to you with so much. And then your dad gives you that financial security if you need it. And he gives you that emotional security. If you need it. He gives you that buffer. Now, without that, it's very hard for women when they start feeling like a bit abandoned. I'm not blaming anybody, but that's usually what I find is some kind of childhood trauma. So, so that then goes back to choosing the right partner in the first place, doesn't it? And right. making sure you're with the right person. So making sure that person's healed or understands their kind of insecurities rather than um, reincarnates them. But I mean, oh, I mean, I'm sitting there thinking, who's cheated? <laughs> everybody. <laughs> if you're in Dubai, everybody. But talk to me about that. Is that. Do you think that's more common here in Dubai? Absolutely. Than it... Really? Absolutely. Uh, and I always say that because here's the, the reality. Rich men are far more likely to be cheated on. They think they're not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> say that slowly. Rich men are far more likely to be cheated on. Far more likely to be cheated on. Why are rich men far more likely to be cheated on? Usually their wives don't work. When your wife doesn't work, it gives her the luxury of time, energy, effort, all of those things. So usually she doesn't work. They usually have nannies. So she's not this drained, you know, in England, it's totally different. When you are a housewife in England, you're still in your pajamas all day. Um, but here you've got the luxury of maids, all this stuff. So you've got the luxury to, of being social. And the other thing is usually with rich men, they're busy. They're super, super busy. So it gives their wife a lot of idle time, a lot of idle time. And she's in circles where there's lots of eligible bachelors or lots of desirable men. Now, if you're dating a guy that, you know, is, and this is no offense, but say, for example, just a casual nine to five, his friends are usually a casual nine to five kind of guy. It's not this, oh, look at that guy. Oh, he knows this guy. None of that. It's just, that's John, that's James, that's it. It's quite casual. But with a rich man, he introduces this woman to a lifestyle and to a network that she can't access without him. And then that coupled with spare time and money means idle Idle minds are the devil's workshop. So boredom leads to infidelity. Well, yeah, because it's rich men are also. Um, what happens is they don't realise they're not spending as much time together. So do rich men typically cheat on their mates? They do. I mean, I think with men it's more consistent across the social economic band. It's just that rich men can access more beautiful women if they wanted to. More gold diggers. So the women, the women are essentially shagging the personal trainer, yeah. and the rich men are shagging their secretary. Basically, is that unfortunately? Really? Yeah, unfortunately. Usually, the nannies have a side piece, and he's usually, you know, works for her partner. The nanny has a the nanny. No, no, the wife. Sorry. So the wife. Yeah, a side partner who's usually just like the children's swimming instructor or something like that. Isn't that awful? 
but this is a generalization. This is not everybody, but it's usually what it's I find. Frequent. It's frequent. It's frequent. And uh, also, unfortunately for rich men, they can't help but attract women that like lifestyle more than connection. Because a woman that really values connection, she doesn't like a busy, a rich man's lifestyle. A woman that really needs emotional connection, she finds being with a CEO or being with a really successful man is hard for her. She leaves because she wants emotional intimacy. So rich men are almost left with women that love lifestyle, who will compromise an emotional connection in order to get that financial investment. And so rich men are left with a pool of women who are not as connected to them. So more likely to cheat. If you're single here in Dubai, you're, I don't know, late 40s, mm -hmm. you're attractive, mm -hmm. um, you're independent. Mm -hmm. Man or woman? A woman. A woman, yeah. What kind of man would go for you considering that age? Oh, yeah, that's an interesting question. I would say, I think men do come full circle. What happens is when they're young, they'll choose a compatible partner, like around the same age, same kind of um, social economic status, whatever. Then they might get money. Then they realize how annoying being married is. So they, you know, get usually get divorced. Then they just want to party and they want that 23-year-old Swedish model and they want to enjoy their life. But then they realize how vacuous that is when their back starts hurting and she could care less. And he's sick and she's nowhere to be found. And so then what happens is they get they almost get re-traumatized and then recalibrate back to normal. And then they start seeking more emotional intimacy. And then they want a woman that's around the same age, who's not using them and will be there when, you know, they have a doctor's appointment. Because doctor's appointments get more frequent when a man gets older. So the guy who's 50 years old dates the 35-year-old or the 30-year-old because he's young and hot, etc. Yeah? yeah. The, the guy that's... 65 years old he doesn't date the 50 year old he typically goes for companionship more is that what you're saying well it doesn't matter about so much about his age it's about what he's done in that path say if he's had enough of those models influences that have used and abused him and left him when he's you know needed them and he's seen them walk away with his best friend in a club enough times for him to then recalibrate because that's what they will do hmm. yeah those 23 year old influences that you think are going to be loyal to you they're on the table for free food and they will leave with the bouncer's number. Talk to me about narcissistic women. Oh, there's so many of them. Yeah. Well, well, first of all, what is a narcissistic woman? Um, I would say narcissistic women. You, I would say there's more of a case of narcissistic mothers than there is just of women. And I think the, uh, I think the process of becoming a mother, and I think this is something that's under spoke, not spoken about enough, is the process of becoming a mother creates narcissistic women because... It's so draining on the body. The, the things that they go through to have this baby, that when they finally birth it, they almost expect a loyal minion out of that child. And they use that child as a weapon. And so what happens is people who might be slightly selfish and entitled, when they become a mother, they become a narcissist because they see that child as an extension of them. It's their identity. And you see it a lot, even with the, you know, the rise of abortions. The fact that women see babies as a body part and they'll say things like my body, my choice, completely disregarding human life because they see it as a body part. So imagine that mentality going into mothering, that you're seeing a child like an organ, like, OK, if I want it, I keep it. If I don't want it, I don't keep it. Not seeing it as a separate human being that has a life and rights. I'm not saying there's anything wrong or right about abortion, but look at that mentality we're breeding in women, that it's your body, it's your choice. So what's a child then? It's just a body part? So then when they become... Whoa, 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 I'm not having that. Yeah, well, that's the mentality we're creating. I don't, I don't agree with that. Why? Well, because you're, you're suggesting if somebody has sex with a man and they're pregnant within a short period of time, yeah. that they should birth that child. I'm suggesting that it's not a body part. So you can, you can lose that child, you can keep that child, but it should be a mutual decision between husband and wife or between the two parties because it's two people's baby. Just because it's brewed in your body doesn't make it yours. We are biologically pre programmed like this. I didn't volunteer to have a uterus. I didn't say, please let me spend nine months having this baby. We are programmed. So therefore, when if, if I have a baby with somebody, it's not just my choice to kill it or keep it. 
it's a bo- it's a baby. It's not a body part. Yeah, but you're saying that you're saying that um, it takes two people. Women to... women talk to them about uh, uh, and and use them as organs. So uh, well, not... wait, talking well, saying my body, my choice. What is that implying about a baby? That implies that she has the right to decide to keep it or not. But then that implies that the baby is what a a child or a body part. An embryo, yeah. Well, it's a it's a child, and a child is two people's, and the, the idea of me saying my body, my choice suggests it's me, when really two okay. people make you and you and I, you and I, I don't know, we're dating, yeah. Okay, we're both single people. We're oh. dating. We get intimate after a while, and hey, diddly dee, by mistake, something mm. went wrong, and you're pregnant. Yeah. Okay. So what what should happen? We should have a discussion and get to a mutual so agreement. Let's say, yeah, say you say, you know what? I've never had a baby. I've always wanted a baby. It's my dream. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I've never had a baby. I've never wanted a baby. It's my nightmare. I would say whoever, if there's even one person saying no, side towards the no, because it leads to resentment, and the child is then birthed with the conflict. But I do think it should be two people's choice. It shouldn't be my body, my choice. That slogan is disgraceful and disturbing. Well, it's, it's my cr- body, my choice, your money. Yeah. But it is, though, isn't it? Because it, because it, because if a woman gets pregnant and she decides that she wants to have the baby, yeah. that the, the man, regardless, so if it's to pay you, for it. regardless, I have to pay for it for the next 18 you years. You go to jail if you don't. And so many women have had put the wrong man's name on the birth certificate. And even sent men to jail for not paying it when he wasn't the father. Okay, but that's a separate issue. Separate issue, yeah. yeah but for a minute. Yeah. So, so basically, my body, my choice, your money. Disgraceful. Now, tell me if that's not breeding a generation of narcissistic women. We're creating them. Society is conditioning women to become as narcissistic as possible through the use of social media, through the use of abortion laws, through the slogans like uh, women in power, everything is creating narcissism in women these days, but nothing more visceral than the abortion debate.